Today is the 14th of September 2010 and we are on the Majjhima Nikaya Suttas. Today is the 56th time we are talking on the Majjhima Nikaya Suttas and we come to Sutta 136, Mahakamma Vibhanga Sutta, the greater exposition of karma or action. This is a very important Sutta on Kamma Vipaka. Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. On that occasion the Venerable Samidhi was living in a forest hut. Then the wanderer Potali Putta, while wandering and walking for exercise, went to the Venerable Samidhi and exchanged greetings with him. And this courteous and amiable talk was finished. He sat down at one side and said to the Venerable Samidhi, Friend Samidhi, I heard and learned this from the recluse Gautama's own lips. Bodily action is vain. Verbal action is vain. Only mental action is real. And there is that attainment on entering which one does not feel anything at all. And Venerable Samidhi said, Do not say so, friend Potaliputta. Do not say so. Do not misrepresent the Blessed One. It is not good to misrepresent the Blessed One. The Blessed One would not speak thus. Bodily action is vain. Verbal action is vain. Only mental action is real. But friend, there is that attainment on entering which one does not feel anything at all. And this uh, Potaliputta asked, How long is it since you went forth, friend Samidhi? Not long, friend, three years. There now, what shall we say to the elder monks when a young monk thinks the teacher is to be defended thus? Friend Samidhi, having done an intentional action by way of body, speech or mind, what does one feel? Having done an intentional action by way of body, speech or mind, one feels suffering, friend Putaliputta. Then neither approving nor disapproving of the verbal Samidhi's words, the wanderer Potaliputta rose from his seat and departed. I'll stop here for a moment. So here, this uh, Potaliputta, he heard wrongly. He said the, the Buddha, uh, he heard the Buddha say, uh, he, he personally heard the Buddha say, uh, bodily, body karma is vain, verbal karma is vain, only mental karma is real. Uh, but this one, as far as the three karmas are concerned, uh, it is mentioned in some sutta that mental, all three are real, uh, but the only thing is mental karma is more serious. Uh, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, it is more heavy, uh, can be more heavy. Uh. And then the... Uh, the attainment of which does, one does not feel anything at all. Uh, it's a cessation of feeling and perception. Uh, um, okay. Soon after the wanderer Putaliputta had left, the Venerable Samidhi went to the Venerable Ananda and exchanged greetings with him. And this courteous and amiable talk was finished. He sat down at one side and reported to the Venerable Ananda his entire conversation with the wanderer Putaliputta. After he had spoken, the Venerable Ananda told him, Friend Samidhi, this conversation should be told to the Blessed One. Come, let us approach the Blessed One and tell him this. As the Blessed One explains to us, so we shall bear in mind. Yes, friend, the Venerable Samidhi replied. Then the Venerable Ananda and the Venerable Samidhi went together to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, they sat down at one side. The Venerable Ananda reported to the Blessed One, the entire conversation between the Venerable Samidhi and the Wanderer Potali Putta. When he had finished, the Blessed One told the Venerable Ananda, Ananda, I do not even recall having seen the Wanderer Potali Putta, so how could there have been this conversation? Though the Wanderer Potali Putta's question should have been analyzed before being answered, this misguided man answered it one-sidedly. When this was said, the Venerable Udayan said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, perhaps the Venerable Samidhi spoke thus, referring to the principle, whatever is felt is suffering. Then the Blessed One addressed the Venerable Ananda, 
See Ananda, how this misguided man who dined interferes. I knew Ananda that this misguided man who dined would unduly interfere right now. From the start, the wanderer Putaliputta had asked about the three kinds of feeling. This misguided man Samidhi would have answered the wanderer Putaliputta rightly. If when asked thus, he, he would have explained. Friend Putaliputta, having done an intentional action by way of body, speech or mind, whose result is to be felt as pleasant, one feels pleasure. Having done an intentional action by way of body, speech or mind, whose result is to be felt as painful, one feels pain. Having done an intentional action by way of body, speech or mind, whose result is to be felt as neither pain nor pleasure, one feels neither pain nor pleasure. But who are these foolish, thoughtless wanderers of other sects, that they could understand the Tathagata's great, ex great exposition of action or karma? We should listen, Ananda, to the Tathagata as he expounds the great exposition of action. This is the time, Blessed One, this is the time, Sublime One, for the Blessed One to expound the great exposition of action. Having heard it from the Blessed One, the monks will remember it. Stop here for a moment. So here just now, this uh, Putaliputta, he said he heard uh, from the verbal, uh, from the recluse Gotama's own lips, lah, that bodily action is vain, verbal action is vain, only mental action is real. Lah. But the Buddha said, nah, I do not even recall having seen the wonder Putaliputta, so how could there have been this conversation? Hmm. So this person must have lied. Nah. Buddha never met him. Nah. So this Udayana uh, trying to uh, explain why the Rebel Samidhi said so. Uh, he said maybe uh, uh, what Rebel Samidhi means uh, is everything felt uh, is suffering, uh, which uh, in a way is quite correct. Uh, I think Buddha has said somewhere uh, that um, uh, uh, all these three types of feeling uh, uh, in, can be considered uh, all types of feeling can be considered as suffering. Mm. But the Buddha was trying to uh, chastise this uh, verbal Samidhi yeah, for giving an uh, uh, answer uh, which is not satisfactory. Lah. So, so Buddha uh, apparently here, Buddha got annoyed with this uh, Udayan uh, saying he's interfering uh, and he should not interfere. Lah. Mm. So Buddha says, uh, if we do any action by way of body, speech, of mind, is if the result uh, is to be felt as pleasant, uh, then one feels pleasure. Uh, if the uh, result of that action uh, is to be felt as painful, then one feels painful. If it is uh, to be felt as uh, equanimous, uh, neither pain nor pleasure, then one feels so. Uh, then listen, Ananda, and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, Venerable Sir, the Venerable Ananda replied. The Blessed One said, Ananda, there are four kinds of persons to be found existing in the world. But four, here some person kills living beings, takes what is not given, misconducts himself in sensual pleasures, speaks falsehood, speaks maliciously, speaks harshly, gossips. He is covetous, has a mind of ill will and holds wrong view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. But here some person kills living beings, etc., and holds wrong view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. Here some person abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, from misconduct and sensual pleasures from false speech, from malicious speech, from harsh speech, from gossip. He is not covetous, his mind is without ill will, and he holds right view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. But here some person abstains from killing living beings, etc., and he holds right view. On the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. So here for a moment. So here the Buddha says there are four kinds of persons. The first kind, he generally um, commits the ten evil karmas or the ten unwholesome karmas. Three uh, bodily unwholesome karmas, killing, taking what is not given and misconduct and sensual pleasures. 
Then four pertain to speech, uh, lying, uh, malicious speech, speak, speaks harshly uh, and gossips. Uh. And then uh, three pertains to mental unwholesome karma, uh, covetous, uh, then the mind of ill will and have wrong view. Uh. So these are the ten unwholesome karmas. Uh. So this person, the first type of person, he generally uh, commits these uh, ten unwholesome karmas much more than wholesome karmas. Uh. And after, after death, uh, he is reborn in hell. Uh. The second kind of person, uh, he also generally uh, um, commits unwholesome karma. Uh, but after passing away, uh, he reappears in heaven. Uh. The third type of person, uh, he generally uh, uh, does uh, wholesome karma, uh, much more than unwholesome karma. Uh. He keeps the precepts. Uh, and after passing away, he uh, is reborn in heaven. Uh. And the fourth type of person uh, uh, generally also keeps the precepts uh, and uh, 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 does the ten wholesome karmas uh, much more than unwholesome karma. But after that, uh, he reappears in hell. Here, Ananda, my means of ardor, endeavor, devotion, diligence and right attention, some recluse or Brahmin attains such concentration of mind that when his mind is concentrated, with the divine eye, which is purified and surpasses the human, he sees that person here who kills living beings, takes not takes what is not given, etc., and holds wrong view. And he sees that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. He says thus, indeed there are evil actions. There is a result of misconduct. For I saw a person here who killed living beings, uh, took what is not given, etc., and held wrong view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, even in hell. He says thus, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who kills living beings, takes what is not given, etc., and holds wrong view, reappears in a state of deprivation, even in hell. Those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken. Thus he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting only this is true, anything else is wrong. But here, Ananda, my means of ardor, endeavor, devotion, diligence, etc. Some recluse or Brahmin attains such a concentration of mind that when his mind is concentrated, with the divine eye or heavenly eye, which is purified and surpasses the human. He sees that person here who kills living beings, takes what is not given, etc., and holds wrong view. And he sees that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. He says thus, Indeed, there are no evil actions. There is no result of misconduct. For I saw a person here who killed living beings, took what is not given, etc., and held wrong view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination even in the heavenly world. He says thus, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who kills living beings takes what is not given, etc., and holds wrong view, he appears in a happy destination even in the heavenly world. Those who know thus know rightly. Those who think otherwise are mistaken. Thus he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting only this is true, anything else is wrong. I'll stop here for a moment. So the Buddha here says uh, there might be some ascetic. Uh, he meditates uh, and attains to concentration of mind uh, such that his heavenly eye opens uh, and he can see uh, beings uh, dying and reappearing um, uh, after that, uh, reborn, where, and all that. Uh, uh. So he sees this person. Uh, uh, when this person is alive, uh, uh, this person uh, does a lot of unwholesome karma. Uh, and then he sees after this person has passed away, uh, he re is reborn in hell. Uh, so this uh, ascetic says, uh, there is karma vipaka. Uh, uh, for I saw my, with my own eyes, uh, uh, this person uh, doing unwholesome karma and is reborn in hell. Uh. 
And then he comes to the conclusion, everybody uh, who does unwholesome karma will be born in hell. Uh, and he sticks to this uh, view, uh, only this is true, anything else is wrong. On the other hand, there is another ascetic. Uh, he saw also another man uh, who does all the unwholesome karmas. Uh, and after passing away, uh, this second person reappeared in heaven. Uh, then when he saw this, uh, then he came to the conclusion that uh, there cannot be any karma vipaka uh, because the person uh, has done evil uh, and yet he's reborn in heaven. Uh, so he comes to the conclusion that uh, everybody uh, who kills, steals, etc. Uh, does unwholesome karma, after they pass away, uh, they will take rebirth in heaven. Uh, and he sticks to this view. Uh. Now the problem is uh, with these two ascetics uh, is that their psychic power is limited, uh, not like the Buddha. So when they saw this person, uh, they did not see the past lives of this, this man uh, who broke the precepts, uh, the first man and the second man. If they had seen many, many past lives, uh, then they would have understood uh, why one person uh, does unwholesome karma and is reborn in hell, whereas the second person does unwholesome karma and is reborn in heaven. Uh. Okay, here Ananda, by means of other endeavor, uh, etc., some recluse or Brahmin attains such a concentration of mind that when his mind is concentrated with the divine eye, which is purified and surpasses the human, he sees that, pers that person here who abstains from killing living beings, who abstains from taking what is not given, etc., and holds right view. And he sees that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. He says thus, Indeed, there are good actions. There is result of good conduct. For I saw a person here who abstained from killing living beings, who abstained from taking what is not given, etc., and held right view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. He says thus, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who abstains from killing living beings, who abstains from what is not given, etc., and who, who, who does not take what is not given, etc., and holds right view, uh, reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. Those who know thus know rightly. Those who think otherwise are mistaken. Thus he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting only this is true, anything else is wrong. But here Ananda, by means of ardor, endeavor, etc., some recluse or Brahmin attains such concentration of mind that when his mind is concentrated with the divine eye which is purified and surpasses the human, he sees that person here who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, etc., and holds right view. And he sees that on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, in perdition, even in hell. He says thus, Indeed, there are no good actions. There is no result of good conduct. For I saw a person here who abstained from killing living beings, who abstained from taking what is not given, etc., and hell right view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, even in hell. He says thus, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who abstains from killing living beings and holds right view reappears in a state of deprivation, even in hell. Those who know thus know rightly. Those who think otherwise are mistaken. Thus he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting only this is true, anything else is wrong. Let's stop here for a moment now. So similarly here, uh, you have two cases. Uh, there is, uh, first, there is one person uh, who does all the wholesome karmas. Uh, he abstains from unwholesome karmas. Uh, and after passing away, uh, he reappears in heaven. So an ascetic uh, who has some psychic power, uh, he sees uh, this person uh, uh, does uh, generally uh, wholesome karma. And after passing away, reappears in heaven. So he believes la, that there is such a law of karma vipaka. La. But then he comes to the conclusion, everybody eh, who acts like this eh, will be reborn in heaven. On the other hand, the, another person, eh, uh, he also does all the wholesome karma generally. Eh, and after passing away, eh, he reappears in hell. La. 
So another ascetic sees this, uh, and he sees uh, there cannot be this law of karma vipakala because he saw himself, uh, this person uh, generally uh, being such a good person, uh, uh, abstaining from all the unwholesome karmas, uh, but is reborn in hell. Uh, so he comes to the conclusion that everybody uh, who abstains from unwholesome karma will be reborn in hell. Uh. Therein Ananda, when a recluse or Brahmin says, indeed there are evil actions, there is a result of misconduct. I grant him this, or I agree with him. When he says, I saw a person here who killed living beings, took what is not given, uh, and etc., and held wrong view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, even in hell. I also grant him this. But when he says, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who kills living beings, takes what is not given, etc., and holds wrong view, reappears in a state of deprivation, even in hell. I do not grant him this. And when he says, those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken, I also do not grant him this. And when he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting only this is true, anything else is wrong, I also do not grant him this. Why is that? Because Ananda, the Tathagata's knowledge of the great exposition of Kamma is otherwise. So here the Buddha says, uh, this ascetic uh, who saw a person uh, uh, do unwholesome karma and was reborn in hell, uh, uh, he agrees with this, the, the conclusion, uh, the first two conclusions. Uh, but when this, this ascetic says, uh, everyone uh, who does unwholesome karma will be reborn in hell, uh, the Buddha says he does not agree. Uh, Therein Ananda, when a recluse or Brahmin says, Indeed, there are no evil actions. There is no result of misconduct. I do not grant him this. When he says, I saw a person here who killed living beings, took what is not given, etc., and held wrong view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. I grant him this. But when he sees... Oh, sorry, but when he says, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who kills living beings takes what is not given, etc., and holds wrong view, reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. I do not grant him this. And when he says, those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken, I also do not grant him this. And when he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting only this is true, anything else is wrong, I also do not grant him this. Why is that? Because Ananda, the Tathagata's knowledge of the great exposition of action or karma is otherwise. Therein Ananda, when a recluse or Brahmin says, indeed there are good actions, there is result of good conduct, I grant him this. And when he says, I saw a person here who abstained from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, etc., and held right view. And I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. I also grant him this. But when he says, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who abstains from killing living beings, who abstains from taking what is not given, etc., and holds right view, reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. I do not grant him this. And when he says, those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken, I also do not grant him this. And when he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting only this is true, anything else is wrong, I also do not grant him this. Why is that? Because Ananda, the Tathagata's knowledge of the great exposition of action is otherwise. Therein Ananda, when the recluse or Brahmin says, indeed there are no good actions, there is no result of good conduct, I do not grant him this. When he says, I saw a person here who abstained from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, etc., and held right view, and I see that on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, even in hell, I grant him this. But when he says, on the dissolution of the body after death, everyone who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, etc., and holds right view, reappears in a state of deprivation, even in hell, I do not grant him this. And when he says, those who know thus know rightly, those who think otherwise are mistaken, I also do not grant him this. 
And when he obstinately adheres to what he himself has known, seen and discovered, insisting only this is true, anything else is wrong, I also do not grant him this. Why is that? Because Ananda, the Tathagata's knowledge of the great exposition of Kamma is otherwise. Therein Ananda, as to the person here who kills living beings, takes what is not given, etc., and holds wrong view, and on the dissolution of the body after death, he appears in a state of deprivation, even in hell. Either earlier he did an evil action to be felt as painful, or later he did an evil action to be felt as painful, or at the time of death he acquired and undertook wrong view. Because of that, on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, even in hell. And since he has here killed living beings, taken what is not given, etc., and held wrong view, he will experience the result of that either here and now, or in his next rebirth, or in some subsequent existence. Stop here for a moment. So here, Buddha is explaining why these... Four cases are like that. First, the Buddha says uh, that this person uh, who uh, generally uh, creates a lot of unwholesome karma and he is reborn in hell. Uh, there are a few reasons for this. Uh, either in an earlier life, uh, he did evil karma. Uh, uh, so that is why uh, when he passed away, uh, uh, he went to hell. Uh, or uh, at the time, uh, sorry, or later he did an evil action. Later uh, probably refers to uh, later than the times uh, that he did uh, uh, all this action, uh, probably towards the end of life or something. Uh, uh, because here when he talks about uh, this person generally kills, steals, uh, commits... Uh, sexual misconduct, etc. This is the main part of his life. So, uh, and he says later, maybe the later part of his life, the last part of his life, because sometimes a person can behave in a general, most of his life, he can behave in a, in a certain way. But towards the end of life, that person can change. So maybe this person... Uh, at the towards the end of his life, uh, he also did uh, um, evil karma. So that's why that, that brought him down to hell. Uh. Or at the moment of dying, uh, he had wrong view. Uh. Wrong view meaning uh, he does not believe in karma vipaka. He does not believe that there are uh, planes of rebirth uh, that a person can be reborn. He does not believe that there are holy men. Uh, this generally uh, refers, wrong view generally refers to these three things. Uh, so these three uh, conditions uh, uh, can explain uh, why he ended up in hell. Uh. Mm. So you, this uh, earlier, uh, if you take earlier as an earlier life, uh, later you can you can take also to be this life, uh, any time this life. Uh. And since here he killed living beings, etc., he will experience the result, the result of that either here and down. That means in this lifetime, uh, he will suffer. Uh. There are some people, uh, because of conscience, uh, they get into depression and all that, uh, because of doing unwholesome action. Uh. So they suffer here and now. Or in his next rebirth. This next rebirth, uh, since the next rebirth uh, is, means uh, an either immediate next rebirth, uh, which is already explained as going to hell, uh, or the life after that, or in some future existence, in some future existence, he still has to pay for that evil karma. Okay, this is the first one. And now we come to paragraph 18. Therein Ananda, as to the person here who kills living beings, uh, takes what is not given, etc., and holds wrong view, and on the dissolution of the body after death, he appears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. Either earlier he did a good action to be felt as pleasant, or later he did a good action to be felt as pleasant, or at the time of death he acquired and undertook right view. Because of that, on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. But since 
he has here killed living beings, etc., and held wrong view. He will experience the result of that either here and now, or in his next rebirth, or in some subsequent existence. Okay, now this one, uh, this person uh, did a lot of unwholesome karma, but ended up uh, after dying uh, in heaven. Uh. So the Buddha said, uh, this can be due to uh, good karma in a previous life. Uh. Uh, good karma in a previous life. He did, did mention which pre previous life, uh, which, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, bore fruit uh, at the moment of dying. Uh. So the resultant uh, uh, bore fruit. Uh, so because of a, a good karma in a past life, uh, uh, then uh, he went to heaven. Uh, even though this life, uh, he did a lot of evil karma. Or, Later, he did a good action. That means, uh, uh, later part of his life, uh, the most, the major part of his life, uh, he did a lot of evil karma. Uh, but the later part of his life, uh, he did some good karma. Uh, so when he was dying, uh, he thought of that good karma and that brought him to heaven. Uh. Or in spite of doing so much evil karma, at the last moment, uh, he got right view. Uh, Right view about karma. Uh, maybe he heard some Dhamma teaching, uh, and then at the last uh, moment, uh, he, meaning the last uh, maybe few uh, months or few weeks of his life, uh, he listened to Dhamma and attained right view, uh, worldly right view. Uh. So because of that, uh, uh, thinking about right view, uh, he uh, he was uh, reborn in heaven. Uh, but because in this present life, uh, he did a lot of evil karma. So either in this lifetime itself, uh, he might uh, feel uh, remorse or depression uh, or suffer for it. Uh, for example, become sick or, or, or what. Uh, uh, either here he experiences the result of the evil karma or in the next rebirth. But here he already, already says uh, that the next rebirth is, is going to heaven. Uh, so the rebirth after that, uh, or in some future existence, uh, he will have to pay for this evil karma. Uh. Therein Ananda, as to the person here who abstains from killing living beings, who abstains from taking what is not given, etc., and holds right view, and on the dissolution of the body after death, he appears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. Either earlier he did a good action to be felt as pleasant, or later he did a good action to be felt as pleasant, or at the time of death he acquired and undertook right view. Because of that, on the dissolution of body after the death, he has reappeared in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. And since he has here abstained from killing living beings, etc., and held right view, he will experience the result of that either here and now, or in his next rebirth, or in some subsequent existence. Stop here for a moment. So here this third type of person, uh, he uh, abstains from unwholesome karma, uh, and uh, he is reborn in heaven. Uh. So the Buddha said uh, that can be due uh, to uh, good karma in a previous life, or good karma in this lifetime, or at the time of dying, uh, he um, had this right view. Uh, he believed in karma vipaka, uh, and that there's a rebirth, etc. Uh, so, uh, these are the three reasons uh, for his being reborn in heaven. Uh. Also, the Buddha says, uh, because of doing good karma in this lifetime, uh, either in this very lifetime uh, he's happy, or in the next rebirth, but in the next rebirth, uh, that means uh, it would be the heavenly rebirth, uh, or in some future rebirth. Uh, uh. Therein Ananda, as to the person here who abstains from killing living beings, from taking what is not given, etc., and holds right view, and on the dissolution of the body after death, he appears in a state of deprivation, even in hell. Either earlier he did an evil action to be felt as painful, or later he did an evil action to be felt as painful, or at the time of death he acquired and undertook wrong view. Because of that, on the dissolution of the body after death, he has reappeared in a state of deprivation, even in hell. 
But since he has here abstained from killing living beings, etc., and held right view, he will experience the result of that either here and now, or in his next rebirth, or in some subsequent existence. I'll stop here for a moment. So this fourth type of person, uh, he generally uh, abstains uh, from evil kamala, uh, and after dying, uh, he was reborn in hell. Uh. So the Buddha said uh, there are three reasons for this. Uh, either in a previous life, uh, he did a lot of evil karma, or uh, later, later meaning uh, the, the last part of his life, uh, last part of his life, uh, uh, he did evil karma, uh, even though the major part of his life, uh, he did good karma, but the last part of his life, he did evil karma, so that brought him to hell. Or at the time of dying, uh, he suddenly had wrong view, uh, uh, and so that brought him to uh, hell. Uh, so these are the three reasons. Uh. And the Buddha also said uh, that uh, because of his good karma, his wholesome karma in this uh, very lifetime, uh, either he will be happy for, uh, in this lifetime or uh, in the next rebirth after that hell rebirth uh, or in some future rebirth, uh, he will reap the result uh, of that good karma. Uh. Thus, Ananda, that is, there is action that is incapable of good result and appears incapable. There is action that is incapable of good result and appears capable. There is action that is capable of good result and appears capable. And there is action that is capable of good result and appears incapable. That is what the Blessed One said. Remember, Ananda was satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. So here, uh, the Buddha is trying to explain uh, that karma is not so straightforward. It uh, doesn't mean uh, that a person does uh, evil, uh, uh, wholesome actions here, uh, that he will immediately after that uh, go to heaven. Uh, he might go to heaven, he might even go to hell. Uh, because karma vipaka is very complicated. Uh, this karma vipaka, uh, the result uh, is from many, many lifetimes. Uh, and because we cannot see uh, the past. Uh, sometimes we cannot explain uh, many things. That's why in the suttas, the Buddha said, uh, there are four things uh, we should not think about too much. Uh, it can make us uh, deranged. Uh, uh, one is uh, the result of karma vipaka, uh, because karma vipaka is so complicated, it involves so many lifetimes. Uh, so the Buddha said, don't think about it too much. Uh. Second one is the future of the world. Uh, uh, some people like to speculate uh, the end of the world is coming to two zero one two one, one, two, huh? two, zero one two. Uh, two years time the world to come will come to an end uh, so uh, all this uh, the Buddha says I uh, don't think about it so much and then the third one is the, the powers of a Buddha and the fourth one is the depth of jhana uh, so uh, these things, uh, the Buddha said, I uh, don't think too much. Uh, but this uh, sutta is interesting because it tells us uh, that uh, where we take rebirth uh, can be due to present life karma, can be due to past life karma, and can be due uh, at the moment of dying, whether we have right view or wrong view. Uh, these three things. Uh, uh, 